Hello everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I have a pretty decently sized book haul for May. Um, I sort of lost my mind and it was my birthday so I got a bunch of books as presents which is my favorite kind of present quite frankly. I mean isn't that true for all of us? I think so. Um, so, so this isn't a thousand hours long. Let me just get started right away. Um, I got two books this month from Book of the Month Club. I got The Change by Kristen Miller, Kirsten Miller, excuse me, and it's something about a bunch of ladies who are in their late 40s, early 50s, and they start to, um, like, get powers in midlife, um, putting them on a collision course with the evil that lurks in their wealthy beach town. So this is sort of witchy menopause ladies. Sounds like a ton of fun. I'm very much here for it. And then this one, which you have probably seen a lot of places. There go a bunch of books. That's perfect. <laughs> we have The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. Um, Mexican Gothic meets Rebecca in this debut supernatural suspense novel set in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence about a remote house, a sinister haunting, and the woman pulled into their clutches. So this should be good and creepy. Let me pick up the books that fell. One moment. Just in case you were wondering. Yes, I am a professional booktuber. <clears throat> okay, so let's deal with the ones that fell on the floor. <laughs> Um, in my witches box for May, I got two books about intuition. So this is The Intuitive Dance, Building, Protecting, and Clearing Your Energy by Atherton Drenth. And The Call of Intuition, How to Recognize and Honor Your Intuition, Instinct, and Insight by Chris Franken. Extremely shiny, but very lovely cover. And then... I don't think I've posted this yet. I'm pretty sure I have not. But I got this as part of the true crime book box from One Night Stand with a book. Um, it's a wonderful website I hadn't heard of before. But one of you lovely, lovely people, Mary Stargator, gifted me a gift certificate for them. So I bought the true crime box set. So I got a bunch of other goodies. And this book, Judas, How a Sister's Testimony Brought Down a Criminal Mastermind by Astrid Hollyder. Um, I hadn't heard of this before. Um, in 2013, Astrid made the life-altering decision to testify against one of the world's most notorious gangsters, her brother, Willem Wim Halider, best known for his involvement in the 1983 kidnapping of the CEO of the Heineken Brewing Company and currently on trial for his involvement in multiple murders. Wim had terrorized and extorted his family for 30 years, threatening to kill anyone who disobeyed him. So, I'm not sure what's going on here, but Patrick Radden Keefe, who I'm a fan of, a lurid crime story in the form of an intimate domestic drama. I mean, probably give me nightmares, but it should be really good. And I hadn't heard about the case or the book before, and I watch a lot of true crime, more than a single person should, probably. So, okay. Um, I have four romance novels here from Paperback Swap. Um, I don't know how, but I got a book by Maya Rodale. Um, she writes historical romance typically for Avon. And I realized it was part of a series, like number three or something in a series. I thought, Laura, you ding dong. So I went online and I got the first two and then I got two in another series and I don't know which is which, but here they are. <laughs> Here's Lady Claire is All That, part of the Keeping Up with the Cavendishes series. This is part of that same series. This is Chasing Lady Amelia. And then I think these are from that series I already owned one book in, A Tale of Two Lovers, love that green, and A Groom of One Zone. So, some romance, not that I was going to run out anytime soon, but, you know, always good to have more. Then two books that my mom has read and passed on to me so I can read them now. This is book number two in the Elizabeth Cage Supernatural Thriller series, Dark Light by Jodi Taylor. The first book in this series is called something isn't that fascinating laura wow you're really good at this white silence is the first one um she's probably most well known for her chronicles of saint mary's series which i adore and so is my mom they're so good so i have number two in this series and then she read number 
I think this is 32 in the Agatha Raisin series down the hatch. Um, MC Beaton has sadly passed away about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Sometime in the early pandemic. Time is a blur, it means nothing. But it's number 32 in this Cozy Mystery series. I'm a fan, looking forward to it. This will be a nice little afternoon treat for me sometime. Then we have um, some books that I bought just because I felt like buying books for myself. None of these were needed. That's not the point of having books, right? So here's another romance novel. This is Julia Quinn because of Miss Bridgerton. This is number one in the Rokesby series. I forget which. It's not the Smythe Smith Quartet series. I think it's the Rokesby series. So these are sort of a prequel series to the Bridgerton books. So I've got the first one here. This I heard about from the fabulous Jen Campbell here on um, YouTube, booktube. This is The Therapist by Niall Giacomelli. I don't know anything about it really, but it's sort of pandemic related and um, little by little, little, excuse me, each victim becomes transparent, their heart beating behind a visible rib cage, a, an intricate network of nerves left hanging in midair. Finally, the victims disappear entirely, never to be seen again. In this bittersweet and hauntingly surreal tale, a couple struggle to connect while the epidemic creeps nearer. I dreamt we were at sea, she says. So it just sounds kind of creepy and good. Plus, I like this little cover and publisher and Fairlight Books. Yeah, love it. This I got as sort of a joke for myself, but I know I will probably use it because I am a basic witch. <laughs> <laughs> How to Summon Success, Banish Drama, and Raise Hell with Your Coven by Jaya Saxena and Jess Zimmerman. Um, I am not part of a coven, but I like stuff like this. So this looks like fun. Then I got number seven, the latest in the Miss Cop series by Amy Stewart. This is Miss Cop Investigates. Um, I am currently about to start reading number six right now, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. And these are just fantastic based on real characters um, in New York, New Jersey in the early 1900s. So fabulous, fabulous. And finally, it's in paperback. I didn't want to have to buy the hardcover just because it would have been more expensive, whatever. This is number 17 in one of my favorite series of all time, the Inspector Gamache series by Louise Penny. This is The Badness of Crowds. Number 18 comes out in, I'm going to say August of this year. And if you can see here, no, you can't see really. I am one, two, three, four, five. My mom has one six. I'm six books behind. I always like to have one on hand though, and I like to read a bunch of them in a row. So I will binge when the time is right. Okay. Now for some books I got at half price. So I got rid of a bunch of books. I sold a bunch of stuff back to them. So these were all free and I even had money back after that. And it's like a miracle. Okay, I have four books from them. Two are in the Harlequin Heartwarming series. Um, my library does not carry these. I don't think they're anywhere in my library system. And these are clean romances that are not religious. All that we have in my system are religious ones that are clean and that's not my jam. So I bought two to give them a shot. This is A Family for Keeps by Janice Sims. So kindergarten teacher Marley adores her community in Florida. She knows everyone, everyone knows her, but she has a secret. She's in love with her best friend, single dad, Sebastian. Finding the courage to say I love you feels impossibly hard. So that's this one. And then the other one that sounded good was Hill Country Promise by Kit Hawthorne. I love this cover. Um, can a childhood pact lead to forever love? So when they were kids or younger, they, uh, um, Emily, Eliana, and Luke agree to marry when, um, if she was still at 27, if she was still single. So her birthday rolls around, he proposes, it seems perfect, too perfect, and now she's not sure if she really has his heart, so she has to figure out what to do from there. So, sounds good, happy to try those. This one, both of these next two books, I made a little, like, oh, noise when I saw them, because I have been looking for them for quite a while, and I can't believe I found them for reasonable price. So, As Meat Love Salt by Maria McCann. This chunkster I heard about from Simon Savage ages ago. He's talked about this quite a few times. Um, this is set in the 17th century in England, um, just after the Civil War. I think it's just after. 
So it's about this man, um, Jacob Cullen, former servant who dreams of baptizing himself with the blood of battle into a new life after the war. Ye. Only his brewing erotic obsession with a fellow fighter threatens his plans. So it's a dark erotic tale of passion and obsession, a gripping portrait of England beset by war, and the harrowing tale of a man on the edge of madness. Um, so it's sort of a psychological erotic thriller. Um, this man is in love with another soldier, friend of his, man of his, and he can't hack it, so he kind of loses his mind. Everything I've heard about this is really, really great. I've looked into this a little bit since I heard about it from Simon, and um, I don't know when I'll get to it, but I'm very happy to have a copy. It was like $7. I mean, yes, please. Where am I going to put this? I'm running out of the room. And then I always find his books at this half price. I don't know how or why, but I'm so thankful. This is Graham Norton's newest home stretch. I have yet to read any of his novels that are not well, novels, any of his novels. I've written, um, read all of his nonfiction except for one, I believe, and loved them. And I love Graham's show anyways. I've been a fan of his since he had his show in America on Comedy Central like 20 years ago or something, more than that. Anyways, very happy to have found this one. And this is going to go right to my mom so she can read it soon because she has all caught up, like, unlike me. And then this last chunk are ones that I got for my birthday. My birthday was um, in the middle of May. <sighs> And let's see what we have here. So this is from my friend Annie Moon Magic, a handbook of lunar cycles, lore, and mystical energies by Aurora Kane. This is really nice paper inside and really lovely illustrations, which I probably won't flip to because that's my luck. So lots of different stuff in here. And maybe repeated information from lots of other books I have or things I know, but that's okay. It's just a lovely, lovely book and I'm very thankful. Uh, my mom bought me three books. <laughs> I don't think she knows what she bought me yet. So mom, if you're watching, this is what you bought me. <laughs> um, some Jane Austen. I didn't have Lady Susan. Um, so this is Lady Susan, the Watsons and Sanditon. Um, I have all of her other stuff, but not this. I could have sworn I had this somewhere else and I don't. So I have this now finally. And then how I forgot about this manga series. I don't know. This is my favorite manga. I don't hear anyone else talk about it, but I just adore it. I love this author and illustrator. She does such an amazing job. It's number 12 and 13 in the Bride's Story series by Keoru Mori. This is still wrapped in plastic. Um, set on the Silk Road in the 1800s. And this is number 13. I, I just adore them. There is occasionally some nudity. Let me look and make sure. But beautiful illustrations. She does detail so amazingly. Sometimes there are just full page spreads that are with nothing in them. I mean, like, look at this. It's amazing. So I am very excited to have 12 and 13. Like, wow. And then some presents. Um, these two are from my friend Jenna. Hey, Jenna, thank you. They're both high on my wish list, so I'm very excited to have them. This is To Marry an English Lord, Tales of Wealth and Marriage, Sex and Snobbery in the Gilded Age by Gail McCole. McCall, I'm not sure, and Carol McD Wallace. What does this stand for? McDonough? McDonald? I don't know. No idea. Um, but yeah, I know some of these ladies already and some of their stories, especially the big names from um, America and the States, Vanderbilt, blah, 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 Churchill's, blah, blah, you know, all that stuff. But I'm very excited to read the rest of this and it's illustrated or like photographs and stuff, which makes me so happy in a nonfiction book. So I have that from Jenna and another one of my favorite comfort authors, Jenny Colgan. This is a standalone, I believe, The Christmas Bookshop. <sighs> Who doesn't want to read this book, especially around Christmas time, right? And then from her mom, Mama C, to me, um, I have another favorite author, a book about her, Edith Wharton's Lennox by Cornelia Brooke Gilder. Um, Edith Wharton is one of my favorite authors and has been for decades now. Um, I just love her. I love all of her writing. I love her life story. It's so fascinating. Her house, I would kill to tour her house someday. This is all about her life in the house. And I think um, her just the summer colony, how they got stuff together, their farming. I mean, again, illustrations galore. So excited to have this. I am such a nerd. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, this one... Allie from Fox Folios. 
sent me something for my birthday all the way from Asia where she lives. Tons of super cool, super, super cool, super cool stationary stuff like. <laughs> and she sent me this middle grade book, which looks so amazing. Adventures on Trains, The Highland Falcon Thief. This is by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman, illustrated by Eliza Paganelli. I'm so looking forward to this. I'm going to try and save it for next year for um, March, middle grade March. It may not make it that long. I don't know. But I mean, come on. Look how cute this is. I mean, thank you so much, Allie. Thank you. Thank you. So that is my very large haul for May. I mean, I love new books, obviously. If you've been here for any amount of time, you know this to be true. I hope next month I do not have this big of a haul. I think it's 27 books or 28 books. <laughs> mm, I'm not getting rid of as many. Like I'm, I'm trying to go for the one in one out method so far and it's not working. That's all right. It'll get there eventually, right? I'll keep reading them and getting rid of them. That's how it'll work. So thank you to everyone for all your birthday wishes. Thank you to everyone who sent me a book and um, yeah. Just excited to have all these on my shelf finally. So I hope you enjoyed. Should I read any of these first? Prioritize any of them over anything else? Let me know. I will do my best to work them into June or July if I can. And I will talk to you guys again in the next one. Bye.